you guys. Uh, so I'm Sarah Walton. I'm a lecturer in chemical engineering. I teach a variety of classes for our undergraduate chemical engineering majors. Uh, statistical process control in the spring and we do senior capstone and this semester we were doing what's called the unit operations laboratory. So during the fall we were running this distillation column here um, and Austin here is one of my students so he's going to show you a little bit about what it looks like when the students are in here. This is more of a, a dramatic reenactment since the labs ended a couple weeks ago and we're uh, just finishing up some report writing. So our labs are in the junior and senior level class uh, years that you would take these and you work in groups of three or four and you would run kind of a pilot scale piece of equipment like our distillation column here or uh, our heat exchanger for process control or an evaporator or small reactor. Uh, you usually would spend a few weeks, first you have to design your experiment, figure out which variables you're going to change, what kind of output product you're going to measure, and then from there um, you, you set up and you run and you collect some data and you see if that all goes according to plan and if not you might come back in and, and change the plan, try to collect more data and make sure that you validate your results. Uh, so maybe wander a little bit closer this way with our uh, distillation column in action. You can see it bubbling away. So in, uh, in chemical engineering, we deal a lot with separations, not just reactions like you might think about for you know a chemical reaction we take a raw material and we want to make a finished product with it so once we've done the reaction we often will need to separate different mixtures of a, a component uh, different components within a mixture and if our mixture happens to be two liquids that are combined together like uh, water and ethanol is our typical thing we run here uh, you would use the distillation column taking advantage of the fact that ethanol boils at a lower temperature than water. So the ethanol is gonna rise up to the top of the column and come off as our product through the condenser. And then our water comes out the bottom and uh, should be mostly water from the this here. Uh, let's see. I think Austin is gonna tell us a little bit about his experience as a student in the lab and maybe just a little bit in general about uh, his experience as a student here at UMaine in chemical engineering. So hi everyone, uh, my name is Austin Gilbo. I'm a senior chemical engineering student from North J. Maine. Uh, so this, after graduation, uh, my plans are to work at Sappy Somerset. I've already signed a, an offer with them. Uh, so I'm really excited about that. Uh, but I'm gonna tell you a little bit about the distillation column and kind of the labs. So. Um, I guess Professor Walton did a pretty good job kind of summarizing the labs and the, the group work that we do. Uh, we do written reports and we do also oral reports at the very end. So these reports are to our classmates, they're to our faculty members, and just to kind of work on our, I guess, our verbal skills and our written skills as well. Um, so this specific uh, column, Professor Walton had said it, uh, it does ethanol water mixture solutions. So. Um, this is an example. Um, so this is hand sanitizer. It's 70% ethanol, uh, which is a regular industrial grade uh, hand sanitizer. We've actually made this in the lab with this distillation column. So um, the, the time it need, or it was the time it need around April, um, we were actually using our resources to make hand sanitizer for people in need or people in the community. So it's really kind of cool that we get to do hands-on experience and also help you know the, the greater community so that's really cool um, this stuff we actually learn about before we get our hands on it so we learn about separation liquid separation we learn about boiling points things like that um, and then after that we actually get a chance to apply uh, our knowledge here so the, uh, the column is running at approximately 200 degrees Fahrenheit uh, to separate uh, our ethanol which comes off the top and our water which comes off the bottom uh, so I'll, I'll actually go up and show you a sample that, that we can take off of it.
So this is a sample that we can take. Um, there's five different, I guess, places that we can sample, see how our distillation column is doing, what things that we need to adjust, what things that we can keep the same uh, to run them the most efficient with the least cost um, and, and make a product that we need. So it's really cool that we get to do this, um, I guess, apply our knowledge of the learning class. Is this a, a bubble cap? Oh, yeah. This is a tray from the column. So this is what where the separation of the water and the alcohol is happening. The vapor will go up and the liquid will be sitting on the trays and draining down through the bowl here. So yeah, um, I think that's pretty much it with this distillation column. This will be the same distillation column that you can see in uh, like Louisiana or in the Gulf Coast separating oil and water. Um, or different oil substances. Um, so it's kind of cool that, again, we get to use this this research in, in our own building here. Do you know about your co-op experience? Yeah, yeah, I can tell them a little bit about my co-op. Um, so I co-op for a, uh, a paper company uh, called Westrock. So Westrock is a company that makes Domino's pizza boxes. They also make Amazon boxes, just, I guess, uh, consumer grade cardboard. Um, this company was in West Point, Virginia. So I went down there for two terms, one last summer and then one this spring. And um, basically you're, you're an engineer. So they put you, you're still in school, you get paid to do this co-op or internship and you can kind of get real application of stuff that you learned in class or knowledge that you picked up kind of in, in labs and things like that. So um, I, I guess the the knowledge that you learn will not be wasted. There's a lot of stuff you will you will need to learn, um, but it's really cool that we get to do that here and then apply that somewhere else, even before we graduate. So um, the classes that we miss, like I said, I'd taken a co-op or internship term in the spring. So we get to take those classes that following summer so that we can still graduate in the four years. Uh, I'm not sure, Jordan may be able to talk to you a little bit more about her co-op experience, but um, that's kind of how it works here. So it's nice that you can still do two terms of a co-op, which companies love to see coming right out of college, and you as well get to uh, graduate in, in the four years. So um, I, I think that's all I have here. Uh, thank you guys very much. All right. Uh, so we are going to wander down and take a quick look at one of the other operations, um, unit ops labs that we run here. So another class that I'm about to uh, start teaching next year is called process control. It's really important in the chemical production industries that we do everything automated and online. Uh, so one of the labs that we run here, it, it sounds kind of simple. We uh, have this heat exchanger and cold water comes in and you have steam outside of the, the, um, the tubes to heat it up. Uh, and like we do that in our showers every day but we want to control that with the computer. And so the heat exchanger is up there and you can see that valve with the big yellow arrow. So I can tell this computer right here uh, that I want to open that valve. There we go. It starts the program. So it's measuring uh, the water temperatures and the water flow rates. And that steam valve there, if I, uh, if my water flow coming in suddenly drops because the paper machine is pulling water and my steam doesn't adjust, then I would heat my water up too much. And if that's going into a reactor, that would be bad. We don't wanna have our temperature kind of run away if it's an exothermic reactor. Uh, so it's important for us to be able to control things within this um, computerized system. So if I tell this, valve that I wanted to open from the computer. It's going to obey my command. Uh, and it should go to 50% open from zero. And I hit the button. Okay. Uh, and I'm going to just turn it off because that was just for a, a very brief demonstration. Back down. Okay, so process control is a way to write um, we call them proportional integral derivative control or PID controllers. It's kind of like in your car when you're driving up a hill and you're on cruise control. If you, um, the car needs to give it more gas to maintain the same speed up the hill. The process PID controllers that we write, the students learn how to write them, 
Um, same concept, but we might deal with flow rates or tank levels or uh, temperatures, other things that are going to affect processes within the chemical manufacturing. Um, so we try to teach in the various classes a lot of different skills that will help you be successful going out into this manufacturing uh, industry. A lot of our students go out into the pulp and paper industry about, I want to say about 50% of our graduates who leave here and go to industry end up in pulp and paper, maybe even a little more than that. Uh, and it's a really great opportunity for them. The starting salary is about $74,000 a year. So not bad money. Uh, and a fair number of our students are on full tuition or very close to full tuition scholarship through the Pulp and Paper Foundation. Uh, so we're about to go and talk with one of those students and see the uh, Pulp and Paper Foundation office. Uh, I actually went to school here at UMaine a, a while back on a full tuition pulp and paper ride. So it was a, a good way to come out of school debt free as a chemical engineer. We support about 100 students on these scholarships. And as we're walking all the plaques that you see on the wall, these are the names of donors who have given back and the building is just kind of full of these. Uh, so we're outside the Pulp and Paper Foundation uh, Scholarship Office right now, and this is our student, Jordan Gregory, who is going to tell you a little bit more about her experience, maybe as a foundation scholar, or uh, what co-op and other things that you may hear are like as a chemical engineering student. Thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Jordan. I am a third year chemical engineering student here at UMaine. Um, I'm from Mine at Maine, which is about two hours south from here. And I chose to come to UMaine um, for the engineering program in Pulp and Paper. They gave me a scholarship um, to come here. And then since being here, I've enjoyed uh, my classes, meeting new people, participating in different clubs, and having different experiences on campus as well. Um, I also, my junior year of high school, I went to Considering Engineering, which is a summer program for people who are interested in engineering but not sure what types of engineering they want to um, go into. And you come here um, for a couple days and you go and learn about all the different engineering programs. You get to do hands-on activities within those um, different programs as well. So that was a great experience that I had. And because of that, I decided to apply for the Pulp and Paper Scholarship. And they gave me a lot of different opportunities since coming here. I was able to, after my first year, co-op at Verso Paper Mill in Jay. Um, I was able to do a lot of hands-on experience. I was a process engineering intern, doing a lot of data analysis and things like that. And then last summer, I was able to co-op with Selenis, which is a chemical supplier company at the ND Rumford, in ND Paper in Rumford. And there I did a lot of testing and working on the machine and doing a lot of hands-on work as well. And then I'm actually going back there next summer to do another internship just to keep learning, getting that hands-on experience um, that can always help me um, further in life after I graduate as well. So I've had a lot of good experiences here at UMaine, learned a lot and thankful for all of my professors and the people in the Pulp and Paper Foundation and the program all together for the opportunities that they've given me here. So 